This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Greenman. Mark Twain by Archibald Henderson. Haply, who knows, somewhere in Avalon, Isle of Dreams, in vast contentment at last, with every grief done away, while Chaucer and Shakespeare wait, and Moliere hangs on his words, and Cervantes not far off listens and smiles apart, with that incomparable drawl, he is jesting with Dagonet now. Bliss Carmen preface there are to-day all over the world men and women and children who owe a debt of almost personal gratitude to mark twain for the joy of his humor and the charm of his personality in the future they will i doubt not seek and welcome opportunities to acknowledge that debt my own experience with the works of mark twain is in no sense exceptional from the days of early childhood my feeling for mark twain derived first solely from acquaintance with his works was a feeling of warm and as it were personal affection with limitless interest and curiosity i used to hear the uncle remus stories from the lips of one of our old family servants a negro to whom i was devotedly attached these stories were narrated to me in the negro dialect with such perfect naturalness and racial such perfect naturalness and racial gusto that i often secretly wondered if the narrator were not uncle remus himself in disguise i was thus cunningly prepared coached shall i say for the maturer charms of tom sawyer and huckleberry finn with uncle remus and mark twain as my preceptors i spent the days of my youth excitedly alternating spellbound between the inexhaustible attractions of Tom, Huck, Jim, Indian Joe, the Duke and the Dauphin, and their compeers, on the one hand, and Br'er Rabbit, Sis Cow, and a thousand other fantastic but very real creatures of the animal kingdom, on the other. I felt a strange sort of camaraderie of personal attachment 